What's up guys, welcome back into the channel. If you are new, thank you for stopping in today. So obviously we are up in the big shop and we have a little bit different vehicle sitting behind me. Um, this is actually a customer vehicle. It's actually my neighbor. It's a 2000 S10 that we are gonna be doing a little bit of upgrade and maintenance work to. So number one is we are ripping out the old dingy carpet. It's just real disgusting in here. So I already got the driver's seat out. We're gonna be working on getting the passenger seat out and then the plastics back here all the way around. The kick panel plastic and then up front by your feet. I don't know if you'd consider those kick panel plastics as well, but we're gonna get everything ripped out, get this old carpet yanked out. And then we have new carpet. Um, he said he didn't wanna spend a lot of money on it just because it is an older farm truck. It's got 157,000 miles on it and he just wants it to be a little bit nicer than this. He said he's gonna get the floor mats for the front here. So we're just gonna get all this taken out. We opted to go with um, a little bit cheaper carpet. It's kind of a universal kit. Here it is, it's just a black. Um, I asked him if the collar mattered. He said, no, it doesn't. So this stuff, I've put in a couple semis. It's really nice, it's not super thick, so you can wrap it over the transmission hump and everything. And it's kinda, it reminds me of like that, um, it's a little bit nicer than like what a sub enclosure, like a subwoofer enclosure would be wrapped in. It's a little bit heavier than that, but it's still flexible enough, like I said, that we'll be able to tuck it um, around this hump here, the transmission hump. Um, and then anything else we need to so like I said, I, I've done a couple of these jobs on semis And on a semi obviously it's a manual so the floor is flat But you still have to cut around a lot more stuff in a semi than what one of these vehicles is um, Obviously like this we'll have to cut around where our bolts will poke through um, But it's pretty simple. I just kind of stretch it all out Cut it down to the dimensions that I kind of need. I believe that black piece we got to 78 by 80. And obviously the cab of this S10 is not that big. So we'll trim it down before we get it in here. But we're going to try and get everything out of here. Get the old carpet yanked out. Um, I'm going to try and get everything vacuumed up here so it's not super messy when I go to take it out. We'll get all his stuff pulled out. And then get all the plastics pulled out. So we're kind of working with just a basic square. But when you guys do something like this, you obviously do not want to trim it to the size of the carpet that's going to be coming out because this is formed for the transmission tunnel. So if you pull this out and just lay it over top and you trim to it, by the time you wrap for your transmission tunnel, you're going to be short on your edges. So you always want to leave a little bit extra length. That's why I say we'll just trim it down a little bit, kind of work from one side get that side all lined up and then work this way and then if we have excess you can trim it and then tuck it underneath your panel here so we're gonna go ahead and get started get this seat yanked out i'm gonna get you guys set up um and then once that's yanked out we'll get everything vacuumed up you got all his stuff cleaned out hopefully get the carpet out but um it might be a two-part video so we'll see but i'm gonna do as much as i can now so uh, let's get at it Now that we got everything vacuumed out, picked up, I'm gonna start working on getting all the plastics off. I popped the driver's side off already, and a lot of these GM trucks are the exact same way. It's just a bunch of clips that hold everything together. Um, I just took my little pry bar, stuck it underneath the panel here, and pried it out. And then same thing with the kick panel or the 
foot panel there. Same thing there. Got it taken off. And I believe back here we're going to be working with a Phillips screw there and a Phillips screw there to get this panel off. I'm not 100% sure because I've never taken one of these apart. So we're going to kind of go at it. Obviously the seat folds down here. And I was looking. I don't think there's anything behind this that will be required to be taken off. I think it's just going to clip in on everything else. Might have to take the seat belt off. Um, but I might just try to get it to where I can loosen it up. And then I can tuck the carpet underneath of it. So we're just going to do a little bit of, of an experiment here. So just bear with me. Like I said, I might just try and loosen those screws up and see how much wiggle room I have. Um, because I think if to take this entire piece out, I'll have to take the seat belt off up there. And I know sometimes those bolts can be a pain. So if I can avoid that, we're going to. So I'm going to go ahead and try and take these screws out. I'll let you guys know what I come up with. Um, yeah. All right, so we're gonna have to do it the difficult way and try and tuck underneath because I got the first or the front screw out, but the back screw it's it doesn't want to come, and I don't want to end up stripping it and breaking it and all that stuff. So what I think I'm gonna do is take a razor blade and just cut the carpet kind of around here, pull the big chunk out, and then I should be able to pull what's tucked up underneath out. We're gonna do it the same same way to the other side. I got all this side off, so we should be able to pull everything out that I also bought which is in a box right there some sound deadening we're gonna lay down before we put that new carpet in I'm gonna put it underneath of his feet and underneath the passenger's feet just to help kind of dampen it up a little bit but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff cut out and try and test fit the other carpet so uh, let's get this stuff pulled and we'll go from there I apologize. I didn't film anything there. Um, I just went ahead and pulled the carpet out underneath this. I mean, it was soaking wet. You can see standing water. So I'm just going to try and dry everything up before I go ahead and lay that sound deadening. But I'm basically just going to lay it over top of these wires here and then same on the other side. And I'll probably throw some across the transmission tunnel. Um, I believe they are self adhesive on them if I can get them open so here they are so there's one eight in this pack so we're looking at probably two here two on the transmission tunnel and two on the other side probably won't worry about the back any just because there wasn't back there or any back there to begin with I may lay one like right here and on the other side um, we'll see, but uh, like I said, I'm just gonna try and dry this all up if I can at least get the sound deadening laid um, In this video, that'd be great, but I don't want to lay anything when it's wet Just because I want to trap the moisture underneath and cause the floor to rust out So I'm probably gonna leave the doors open Or roll down the windows because they're mechanical windows roll down the windows Maybe throw a fan in on one side to just get some air movement and dry this out and then tomorrow We'll uh, finish with part two of this video and get the new carpet in here. And then I got to do, I don't know if I mentioned pins and bushings on this door. If you grab the door down here, I mean, it's a good, good jiggle there. So we got to replace those. So I'll probably do those tomorrow and then the carpet tomorrow if I can get everything else finished up. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe everything down, get it all nice and dry in here. Hopefully get the sound deadening on. Um, like I said, we'll continue part two tomorrow, but we'll get this cleaned up and then I'll bring you guys back when we're laying this. So we're going to go ahead and lay this sound deadening. Like I said, it is self-adhesive, so you don't have to worry about that. I got this off Amazon, so we should be able to pull this off and basically just lay it where we want it. And then push it down. Like that. Obviously, it's not going to stick real well to this matting stuff, but everywhere else should, should stick fine. I might have to do a little trimming here on a couple of these pieces. 
maybe take the corner off. But like I said, I'm just gonna lay this stuff down because that original carpet already had like the matting underneath like this. But that stuff is terrible. It gets so just nasty after time. It gets water in it and that's what creates your rust. I'm probably gonna be buying this stuff when I redo my square body um, floor pans and everything. And I'm probably gonna buy the same carpet and lay it in there just because one, I bought that and I think it was like 30 bucks. Um, two, it's gonna be a lot easier to clean and keep maintained like this. Um, and I don't drive the square body much, but adding just those little details is definitely gonna help like the look of it. Um, and like I said, he didn't wanna go super expensive on this just because it is a farm truck. He doesn't drive it often. Um, he might throw a couple things in the bed. So we're gonna do this to hopefully kind of dampen the road noise a little bit and then throw one across the transmission tunnel here, kind of wrap it just to kind of keep the humming down from it. But uh, yeah, this should be a quick process here. It's nice that they're self-adhesive. So I'm gonna finish this up and then I'll show you guys the end result. Well, there we have it guys. Got the uh, matting in. It's nice because this stuff actually formed really well to those curves and everything. Um, I trimmed this corner just because I didn't want to be bunched up because I mean that's where the driver's foot's going to be so everything is in I didn't put any in the back I may do that yet I'm not sure um, obviously I don't think anybody's going to be riding back there so it's not going to be super necessary but like I said we're going to pick the video up tomorrow for part two because I want this to air out back here a little bit more up front wasn't too bad it was definitely definitely holding water in the back so we're gonna let this dry, finish everything up tomorrow, change these pins and bushings. So I guess I'll see you guys then. 24 hours later. All right guys, we are back on the S10 here. I thought I had some footage for you guys of me installing the carpet, but I don't know if I didn't hit the record button or what happened, but I don't. So carpet is in, um, it's just the black stuff. I got some Gorilla Glue here that we use to hold it down. Everything went really well. I have one wrinkle in it here and then one up here. So I'm going to try and smooth these out, but where that sound deadening everything went, I mean, it's really nice and smooth, pulled everything tight. And I actually tucked it up underneath the carpet that's back there in the back seat. So everything looks great. Same thing with the passenger side, got it all pulled. Um, I just kind of worked, glued the driver's side and then stretched it cut my holes and everything that I needed to. So for, I think this is like 50 bucks, like I said. Um, I mean, if you have two pairs of hands on this, it, it can definitely make a, make a vehicle look better. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try and work these um, wrinkles out here and here. Um, it kind of got bunched up on me when I was trying to, trying to pull it, um, cause I got this stuff sprayed and then, yeah, I didn't, didn't catch it in time and it was stuck to it and then stuck to itself. So I'm gonna try and just unpull this and kind of yank it forward just a tad. Um, it doesn't go as high as the um, factory carpet, which he said he's gonna put floor mats and stuff in here so it doesn't have to be 100%. I need to come down here and kind of trim this corner up because we have a little extra here, but all I do is cut it right on that seam, glue the one side and overlap the other side. And I mean, you can't even tell. So that's what I did up here in the corner and it looks, I mean, you can't tell at all. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get these areas worked out and then we're gonna move on to pins and bushings on this door here because obviously there's not really anything left. If you guys can see in there, I mean, there's, let me just lift the door here real quick with my knee and just watch it. She's got some wiggle, so we're gonna address that as well. But um, before we do that, I'm gonna get this all stretched out. So uh, hang tight guys, and I'll pick you up shortly. So we're working here on the bushings now. I got kind of those fixed. Um, they're still like a crease. But um, I got the jack underneath the door, started hammering out the bushings, or the pins, excuse me. Um, once those drop out, I'll basically be able to take the door and set it off to the side, press the new bushings in and then hang the door. The top pin goes from the bottom up and then the bottom pin drops straight down. Just for reference, I believe that's almost on like this S10, the same as my truck. 
So we're gonna go ahead and get these punched out. Probably won't have the camera set up just because I don't wanna take the risk of knocking it over. But give me 30 seconds and I'll show you the uh, after. Just like that, the door's off. This bottom hinge bushing, I'm gonna have to do a little welding on because when you put the new bushing in, I mean, there's nice, well, if it'll focus, there's a pretty big gap in there. I can wall it around. So we're gonna take the welder and kind of weld up the inside over here and try and get it to uh, close up a little bit. We might have to run a drill, a drill bit in there just to close it up, but this one's not too bad. Um, well, I just had it in there. It probably won't go now. But anyway, we're gonna do that real quick, get that fixed, and then this new bushing popped in. All right, I'm just gonna bring you guys up to date uh, in the video here. So I got everything changed on the inside. Um, I also welded right there. Um, everything's in, floor looks great. I just need to vacuum it now, put all this stuff back and pick up all my tools. So all in all, quick little easy job to spice this S10 back up. <coughs> I maybe have between the carpet, the sound deadening and the glue, maybe 75 bucks. So I mean, it's something you guys can do to your old square body, your old Fords, whatever you have just to kind of dress it up a little bit. It looks much cleaner in there with the black um, instead of the all nasty, sopping wet tan that was in there all stained up. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Uh, remember learning as I do, doing what I love. I'm the GMN. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.